Darcy, can I make you host? Sure. All right, you're all set. Have a good night, everyone. Take care, Athena. Good evening. Seeing that there's a quorum in attendance, I'm calling the October 8th, 2020 meeting of the Town Service and Outreach Committee to order at 6.33. Um, Governor Baker's March 12th, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law allows us to hold this virtual meeting of the Town Services and Outreach Committee. Uh, I am now going to call on each committee member by name to confirm that you can hear me and we can hear you. Melissa Brewer. Present. Darcy Dumont, present. Dorothy Pam. Dorothy. Present. Evan Ross. Present. George Ryan. Present. Okay, and we'll be hearing from other people, or people later. Those assisting the meeting will be monitoring committee members' connections, and if necessary, we'll pause the meeting until people are reconnected. We request that everyone be patient with the process. Let me just check and see. I don't think we have any public. Do we? No, nope, no public yet. All right. So no public comment. Um, okay, we, I, I think we have Paul just for half an hour. Is that correct, Paul? Oh, you're mute. Um, so um, we have two sets of town manager appointments today. We have appointments, recommendations to appoint people to the CDBG advisory board and the cultural council um, you, should, you should also have design review board i do not think we have that oh it's in the packet the design review board is i, I went in and checked and printed things out again and um it was there oh did everyone else see that because I do not recall putting that in there. It was sent to us on the 24th. I don't believe it's in the packet, but it was sent to us on the 24th. Oh, okay. Well, I don't think we can look at them. If the, it's, on if the, they the, it's on the posting. It's in the meeting posting. It's on the agenda. Mm -hmm. Is it in the packet? Well, I went to TSO. I sometimes get confused when I'm there. I poked around. Any, I, I think I finally found the, the, the papers for this meeting attached here. I tapped on here and I, I saw it there. And I right. All I want to know is, can we can we look at them if I didn't put them in the packet? It doesn't make any difference if you put them in the packet as long as it was part of the meeting notice, which it was. Okay. All right, all right, so we're going to do them last because I don't have them on my script here. Um, so uh, we're gonna start with um, CDBG, if you could, um, oh, actually, let's start with the Amherst Cultural Council. Uh, Paul, would you mind just giving a little introduction sure. to that? Yeah, so this is for the Amherst Cultural Council. We have one vacancy and there's one uh, appointment. Um, and I'll talk about that first and then we'll talk about the uh, non-voting associate members. So first for the uh, one three-year term, I have Matt Holloway of 63 Maplewood Drive. And um, Matt is relatively new to town, um, has expressed interest in serving the town in some capacity, has a young family and is, um, and this seemed to be a good fit for him from the cultural council's point of view because um, it would help to, to sort of uh, bring a, a broader group of people to, um, to their group. Um, and so that's the appointment. And then we had interest from three um, high school students and um, well, and um, very energi energetic uh, young women and um, really felt interested in having them participate as did the uh, 
the, the chair and the, um, I think it's the secretary of the, of the cultural council. So um, adding them as non-voting associate members uh, for a term of one year, and they are Nandi Shivendi, uh, Sydney Ma Major, and Leah Newberger. And each has a different perspective that they bring to the committee. Each has been involved in the arts in some, one way or another, and each brought a perspective of wanting to involve um, young people in the arts, in the cultural council, and um, it was just so refreshing to hear their perspective about how they wanted to be more involved in town government. And it was a, a real opportunity to engage um, uh, young people in a cultural council, which is allowed to have associate members like this. So those uh, are also presented to you. Thank you. Um, do we have any comments or questions from the counselors? I have one question about um, Matt Holloway. I, I just noticed that he didn't have any arts background. Um, and I wondered if um, it, he, he's enthusiastic, but is it, is it the case that there were just weren't other people that had an arts background or? He, he doesn't himself, but he comes from a family of artists. His father um, was an award-winning um, movie maker of some sort. I don't know exactly who he was, but, and so he has art and, um, and is a philosophy major in college. So um, while he's not professionally dedicated to the arts, he does have a lot of interest in arts personally. And, and did, were there other people that did have arts background or arts? Uh, this, this is or my direct? recommendation, yeah. Um, okay, so and no other comments or questions? All right, so. I, I actually have my hand up. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Sorry, Evan. I just wanted to, to, to follow up on that. Um, because when, as Darcy and George and Alyssa know in OCA, we often work with Paul on, on memos. And I had the same question as Darcy. Given that the Cultural Council charge seems pretty specific about wanting people who have demonstrated, I think it's, uh, here I have it in front of me, scholarship, creativity, or service to the arts. And I didn't necessarily see that in the description. You've provided a little bit of that information now verbally. Um, but again, that's the sort of information I'm usually looking for in a memo is um, not just, you know, that, yeah, personally, I don't care that he's a first time homeowner for the cultural council. That doesn't mean anything to me necessarily. But what does mean something to me is what the connection is to the requirements, because this one actually has requirements to some extent, or at least guidelines. Um, and that's more important to me. And so um, I, I appreciate giving that having that information. Now, it would have been nice to see it in the memo. Fair enough. Yeah, I would agree with that, Evan. Um, so, um, if there are no other comments, um, I uh, move to recommend to the town council the approval of the following town manager recommendations for appointment to the Amherst Cultural Council for a three year term um, um, as a voting member expiring on June 30th, 2023, Matt Holloway, and for a one year term as a non-voting associate member expiring on June 30th, 2021, Nandi Shivende, Sydney Maker, and Leah Newberger. Do I have a second? I'll second. Okay, so roll call, Alyssa? Yes. Darcy, yes. Dorothy? Yes. Evan? Yes. George? It looks like we lost George. Where did George go? Maybe his connection. Well, uh, I think that's a, I'm not sure what we call that vote. <laughs> um, well, it definitely passed for. We should stop because when somebody disconnects, we're supposed to stop and figure out what's happening. Our minutes are supposed to show that someone's gone. It's not just they come in and out. We're so Does someone have the ability to text George to see what's going on? I can do that. I have a question. We, we had a problem with times uh, last meeting. We were two years and three years. And um, 
and the question of what was in the charge and what was in the state law. And we didn't, you know, I read over the minutes for the meeting. And it, when I hear 23 is a date, I'm thinking, aren't we in that same spot again? Isn't that three years? No, you're not in the same spot. So it's, it's a two, that's a two year term? No, that's a three year term. So sometimes three years and sometimes two years. George, George has reported that he just lost power. Oh. Oh. So I, I, I would assume we should just continue without him. Right. The minutes need to reflect that he's gone. And then um, is, was he planning to call in? Because he doesn't, he's like happy to sit in the dark and talk to us on his phone. <laughs> yeah, there, there is one phone attendee. I don't know whether that's George's number that's or him. not. No. <laughs> okay. Um, Mark okay. is absent from that vote then. Yeah. Okay. We have a four. Four votes in favor. Um, okay, so moving on. Um, we have the CDBG Advisory Committee. And Paul, would you like to give us an outline of that? Sure. Um, so there are four appointments, uh, two reappointments, and then two new appointments. Um, the reappointments are Paul Golston and Nathaniel Larson, who are in the second, would be the, this would be their second term of appointment. The new appointments are Becky Michaels of uh, Evergreen Lane and Lucas Hanscom. Um, so Becky Michaels has um, been, has had a lot of experience in the community, um, works with the district attorney's office, has been co-president of the Amherst Education Foundation, uh, has volunteered for Not For Bread Alone, on the Fort River School Council, has been an LSSC soccer coach. and, and most interestingly, she had um, experience delivering meals um, during the pandemic to seniors. And that was an important thing um, for her in terms of what um, it revealed about the nature of our community that she had her eyes open in some ways that um, helped her really want to contribute to the town through the CDBG uh, advisory committee. Um, so uh, Mr. Hanscom, uh, is a person who has expressed a lot of interest in serving, serving the town. Um, again, um, we're trying to, to broaden the number of people and the um, range of people who participate in our local committees. He um, was familiar with the CDBG advisory committee, but not um, experienced in it, and but was willing to learn. And the, the uh, in our interviews, we felt that he was a good person to bring in to the fold at this point in time. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councilor, questions or comments? I don't see any hands raised. Um, okay, I do not have any questions or comments about that. Um, if we don't have any. I will move to recommend that the town council approve the appointments of the following people recommended by the town manager to serve on the CDBG advisory board for a three year term expiring June 30th, 2023. Paul Golston, who was a reappointment, uh, Nathaniel Larson, who's also a reappointment, and Becky Michaels. And for a two year term expiring June 30th, 2022. Lucas Hanscom. Do I have a second? Dorothy. Okay. Um, uh, roll call vote. Alyssa? Yes, with just the caveat that the minutes reflect that it's not called the board, it's called the committee. But that's fine, as long as it reflects what it actually says on the paperwork. It's the CDBG Advisory Committee, not Advisory Board. Okay. Um, Darcy, yes. Dorothy? Evan? Yes. Okay, so four in favor again. Um, and lastly, we have the design review board. Um, Paul? So this, this is um, basically passing 
through the planning boards designee to serve on the design review board. And it's Tom Long of 105 Heatherstone, a member of the planning board who they have designated as their representative to the design review board. Uh -huh. Okay, Evan. Uh, I just wanted to say that we have a, a phone number in the attendees that I believe is George Ryan's number. Oh. Um, for, for, well, I shouldn't read it to the public, but it's the one that ends in 131. Okay. I believe that's George Ryan. Let's see if I can figure out how, what to do about this. Um, okay. All right. Um, so it's allowing me to allow him to talk, rename, and remove. So. Talk. Well, there should be an option to promote to panelists. There isn't one. No, but that looks like it made him a panelist. Or. Uh, Darcy. Yes, George. Okay. It. Yeah. Um, we've lost all power, but I was able to call in. I could only get in as an attendee. But um, so I am able to hear you, and uh, I suppose I can vote if uh, if needed. So uh, I'm here. Okay, we're voting right now on Tom Long for. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I guess okay, we didn't fine. do the roll call vote yet. Um, so um, did I make a motion on that yet? I don't think I did. I think I did. Um, I. People asking questions. Okay, questions, more questions? Um, let's see, Alyssa. So I get to be the one in the room who always has to be picky about the package and has to bring up the fact, she says sarcastically, about the fact that the charge isn't, isn't part of this memo. Paul and I already talked about this. I'm just wondering why nobody else is asking about it. But um, that's a question for my fellow TSO members. I know the answer from Paul, but I don't know why nobody else has brought this up. Um, I can include it in the packet before it goes to the uh, town council. That'll be great. Okay, great. Um, other questions? All right, if not, um, I move that, um, I move to recommend that the town council approve the appointment of Tom Long to the design review board um, with the term to expire June 30th, 2021. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. Um, roll call vote. Alyssa? Aye. Uh, yes. Darcy, yes. Dorothy? Yes. Evan? Yes. George? Yes. Okay. Five in favor. All right. So um, that's all of our appointments for today. We are, I believe, going to get the Community Safety Committee appointment recommendations before the next meeting. Is that correct, Paul? I'm hoping to if we get all the interviews done and everything happens by that time. Yeah, to the extent that you can get them to us a little earlier than usual, I think it would be helpful for that set. Mm -hmm. And um, also, uh, do you have anything else on the agenda for appointments for the next meeting? Um, we are, mm, there's another set we're working through, I think, Agricultural Commission. Uh, there might be a couple others. I, I don't, <laughs> Angela manages all that, so I'm not really sure. Okay, Alyssa? Is that? Yeah. Thank you. I just wanted to verify that that when we say it's going to be ready for the next meeting and hopefully, as you indicated, a couple days ahead, although, you know, it's a very, we're working very fast on this process for this new committee, is um, October 22nd, right? That's our next okay. meeting. Okay. Yeah, cool. The next meeting got moved. It was going to be the 29th, then it was moved to the 22nd. Yeah, it's a, it's a much more complicated process because it's a very large interview team and corralling, getting all the schedules done for everybody is a pretty big uh, sure. And you're interviewing everybody who applies? Yes. 
Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, okay. So moving on to our um, other action item, which is the face recognition technology bylaw, which um, the sponsors of this bylaw are both here, Mandy Jo Haneke and Pat DeAngelis. Um, at the suggestion of the majority of this committee, they subdivided the bylaw uh, proposal into two parts. Um, and the TSO members stated um, that they thought, some TSO members stated they thought it would, they'd be able to approve the facial recognition portion of the bylaw more quickly and easily and get it back to the council. Um, so sponsors uh, acceded to this wish and will be presenting their revision of the face recognition part of the bylaw tonight. So um, take it away, Mandy, Joe, and Pat. Pat and I said we should discuss who's going to present before we did this again, and then we didn't. <laughs> right. no, you know I don't like to talk. Okay. Um, we are bad at planning, apparently. Um, so yes, we did split this in two. Um, do you want me to put this on the screen while I talk? Sure. Yeah. Because um, that sure. might be easier to point stuff out. Um, so, so here's here's the split. It, this one's a lot shorter than the other one with the split because this has one purpose, which is to prohibit the municipal use of facial recognition technology. Um, so we have four definitions. Um, I want to point out the definition of town of Amherst is limited than is, is a limited definition, um, which is why it's in here. Uh, to be clear that um, to try and do the sort of separation, I think Alyssa was was asking about this, and it was one of the things that came up with Paul and the uh, the staff that were at the last meeting. Who does it apply to? And so we took some language from the charter and we limited the town of Amherst to essentially be any department except those departments under the jurisdiction of the school committee, regional school committee, or library trustees. So we're trying to limit it to anything the town manager is in charge of and nothing the other committees um, that are elected bodies um, are in charge of. Um, so so it, will, it won't apply to the schools, for example. It would only apply to um, the departments that the manager is in charge of. So I wanted to point that one out. And then it is the prohibition in B. Um, and so, and then we've added some exceptions. Well, we had one exception in there already, which was the inadvertent or, or unintentional use, but we added 2B uh, in response to some concerns of staff at the last meeting. Um, and this is a language that we hope allows for, or the intention of this language is to allow for essentially the use of facial technology to sign onto a phone or sign on to a computer um, for that instead of typing in a passcode. Um, there were concerns about that uh, given that many computers and all are starting to use that type of technology as their sort of sign on method. And so we have added that as an exception to this uh, prohibition. And then we kept the, um, the bylaw before had an annual report we kept that book for this one, we made it biannual. So every other year um, uh, to report and we picked March 30th um, for the timeline of that. So every March 30th in even numbered years. Um, and, and the report would be for um, what, um, what types of uses are being used under that exception for face logon instead of password and then information regarding the, un the uh, you know, the inadvertent uh, use of facial recognition technology. So basically the report is to report on the use under the exceptions. Um, and then we left the enforcement section the same as it had been before. Questions? Um, Alyssa. So always fun to be able to do brand new things, right? Things we've literally never done before, which include putting in a bylaw that a biannual report has to take place. So that it's rare that the bylaw mentions an annual report and a biannual report is even more unusual. I'm not 
sure why we chose that, although I appreciate the explanations we've received so far. But the other specific thing I want to say about the reporting itself, because I actually do like having reports written into things, yeah. is I want to be clear that at the beginning where it talks about the definition of the report, that sounds good. But down at the bottom, it says somewhere approval. Somewhere in here, it says that the town council approves the report. We, we, we don't approve reports. That's not a thing. Um, except reports, I, I'm just, I don't know how we say we disapprove of this report because if you approve of a report, you're approving of the content. And if the content is, I didn't feel like writing the report, so the answer is no, or I'm writing part of the answer here, but I'm not actually giving you what somebody happens to know is actually inaccurate information. I'm just not, like I said, reporting is unusual in the bylaws to begin with, so let's be cautious with it. If you really want to go with biannual, I won't fight that, but I don't want it to say that we're not going to approve a report. That's Where fine. do you see the approval? Yeah. Um, at the top of page two of even number of years for council approval. You know, you could just take it out. It could just say of even numbered years. Oh, oh um, prior to even numbered years. Okay, I, it, I, it was at the top it. of page one for us. This part right here. Yeah, it could but, just stop where it says even numbered year, period. Because that would mean, because your sentence already says it's submitted to the town council it's published on the town bulletin board, but if you just took out the phrase for council approval, I don't think you'd lose anything, and I think it causes confusion to create such a concept. Other comments? I'm sitting here thinking about it. Um, I hear what you're saying, Alyssa. Um, accepting the report in essence would be saying, hey, yeah, this is what we wanted, or no, this isn't what we wanted. Is that what, which is a form of approval. I'm not having trouble with the word approval. Um, well, I have trouble with the word approval. Yeah, no, I understand that. I mean, I don't have trouble with you having trouble with that word. I can get rid of the word. I'm just trying to make sure that it isn't just that the report is given to the council, but but the council reviews it to see if um, what's been happening, whether or not we have to make any changes or anything like that, I guess. That's and, uh, sorry, Pat, I think the third number under this covers that maybe. That was one of the things I was pausing on too, that based on the information in the report, the town council shall consider. So that's us looking yeah. at the report, the town council looking at the report and saying, here's things, but it's yeah. not the actual approval of, oh, hey, the report, report's good. It's using that report to right. make other decisions then. So I, I think I'd be okay with the removal of that language. Yes, I am too. Cool, because I think that does cover it because you, cause you called that out specifically, that we have to do something. We can't just say thanks <laughs> be done with it. So thank, thank you. Thank you, Alyssa. Okay, Dorothy? Um, I'm having trouble with this because it exists. You're using it. People are using it for to let people in and out of places. People are using it to get in and out of their phones, but I am not using it. Um, you don't like it because it's not trustworthy, but it's used. It, it, it exists. It's on equipment. It will be on new equipment. And so you're saying okay, you have this and it says this, but it all depends upon the purpose. So it's because of the, the intent and the purpose um, part of it that it confuses me. So if your intent or purpose is to let somebody in or out of town hall because they work there, that's a good purpose. Um, but if your intent is to use it against somebody in a criminal case, then that's a bad pur purpose and you're not allowed to do it. And I, I guess I'm finding that kind of going against human nature. I mean, we have this in terms of wiretap laws. Did you get permission or did, was it under certain circumstances? And yet I know that stuff that's on the wiretap, it always comes out, it always gets used. Um, so it's the, it's the intent part. So I'm finding it very complex and um, I'm wondering if it has really been gone over by a lawyer um, who specializes in this field. 
because so far all I can see is that if somehow spatial recognition is used because it exists on town things and will more exist and it causes someone a problem that they this allows it the right to um, sue but that part is kind of vague I don't know what they get um, and it I think it says that nobody's gonna have to pay any money so um, no monetary damages shall be allowed so I'm just Besides being a statement, a very complex statement that we don't like facial recognition technology because, um, and I don't even know if it's in this particular version or in the last one, you talk about it not being really good enough on certain groups and it can really be used to misidentify individuals. I, I just see it as a really confusing, wishy-washy thing and I don't know what it gets us um, or whether it just gets us into um, a situation where somebody says, well, it wasn't supposed to be used this way, but we have it. Okay, somebody goes into town hall and wrecks it up. Okay, and you have some picture from some camera or some whatever, and you're saying, well, you can't use that. So I, wh what is besides saying we don't like this, how is this going to work with the business of town hall and not end up being used when somebody wants to, um, as opposed to being not used? Mandy Joe? Yeah, um, so if face surveillance technology is used against in violation of this bylaw, um, the thing you were mentioning about, well, it's going to get used anyway, then in a court of law, say, um, no, it won't, because the bylaw says you can't use it um, for that. That's the whole purpose of this suppression, suppression section. So even if the town is violating the bylaw, um, by using facial recognition technology that is not going to be able to be used in a court of law to say prosecute someone for some crime. Uh, to go back to your other concern, a closed circuit television capture, you know, which is sort of where I think you were referring to something that, you know, or, or let me use an example that wouldn't even fall under this because it would probably be used by the schools. A video camera that's at the, start, the entrance of a school building to look at an individual before they let that person in. Um, technically does not, in my opinion, fall under this because it's not identifying or verifying an individual based on the physical characteristics of an individual's face. So this is not prohibiting just the, you know, sort of the, the typical security camera use because you're not trying to with that security camera say oh that's so and so because of because we know that person has this uh, dimension of their eyes or something um you know that face recognition technology takes a video essentially of your face and marks different spots and different dimensions 3d wise on your face and then says and then says, that's so-and-so, you know, that's Dorothy or that's Mandy, and then gets another video and says, oh, because of all of those characteristics, we know it's Mandy. Um, and so that's what it's prohibiting. It's not prohibiting sort of that security camera that's there to be able to say, oh, that's a person um, that we're going to let into the school. Um, you know, if it's there to say that's so-and-so because we've already captured that person and we're running the software to run it through a picture database so that before we hit that button to let that person in, we've scanned all of the photos and identified through that scan who the person at the door is. Then if that was used at town hall, this bylaw would prevent it. But it's not preventing that sort of typical thinking of use of, um, you know, a, a video camera to confirm that it's a person that's not holding a weapon, say. But, but you know, Mandy Jill, that's that. Uh, of course, when some when you have a camera system to let people in, of course it matches data somewhere. I mean, and we know that it's not that well used. I'm just, for example, my photos in my Mac um, do this thing called on their own. They put faces, and there's a lot of weird mistakes in there, and they try to. And I don't ask it to do this. It just does it. Okay, that's part of this technology. It puts people in groups and said, this is all this person or that person. And then if you want to identify people in a pick group picture, it actually puts names there. And you know, a third of the time they're wrong. Um, so I'm, I'm just saying the fact, 
and the, the, the thing you, the story you told of why would you have photo to let you into a building unless it checked against the pictures of those people who are authorized to get into the building? What is the point of having a photo recognition? You should have a code instead or a key, you know, the old fashioned thing. So I, I'm just saying it's, it's here and it's very complex. And I don't think this is going to accomplish what you want it to accomplish. What is it you think we're trying to accomplish, Dorothy? You're, mu you're muted, Dorothy. You're trying to say you can't, it can't be used to do that, but it is being used to do that. And a lot of things that the town uses, use it right now. It doesn't suppress that usage. It is using facial recognition technology in law enforcement and um, and say identifying someone and saying yes they're the perpetrator of this this action. It's it's if you so I don't think we're saying that you can't use your phone um, and your facial recognition on your phone. Um, but we are saying that if you do that, it's not going to be used in a criminal procedure proceeding. To to, to yeah, clarify. explain, clar you know, Pat Pat's exactly right. We we are attempt this bylaw would prohibit the use of facial recognition systems and softwares to identify essentially um, to to take a picture of someone or take a. Uh, say, say a camera caught a person walking into town hall and they believe that person, you know, tore up town hall. Um, this bylaw, if passed, would prevent the police officers from taking that picture that they caught um, and running it through a database of 10,000 photos and trying to get a name match through that. It would prevent them from doing that. What it does not prevent because of the exception we added, because there was a lot of concern, this one I just highlighted down here, is the use of someone to use that same technology to sign on to a computer, um, like I do with my phone. It doesn't prevent that. Um, you you readily admit from what I've heard that that this technology is not good. It misidentifies people regularly, and that's the reason we want to prohibit it because we we believe um, that that that's the reason it's here is because it does not work properly. So so I understand that, but has this gone before a criminal lawyer? We met with Bill Newman. I think it would. I don't think it'll work is what I'm saying. So, so we have met with Bill Newman from the ACLU of Massachusetts. Um, it is based on many other towns in, in cities in Massachusetts's bylaws um, for this. In fact, um, Somerville. The, the towns that have um, put this ban into place include Northampton and East Hampton, Springfield, Somerville, Boston, Cambridge, to name Right. I don't know whether that's you know a complete listing, but um, yeah. So so it is. It this basic uh, legal law is in place in at least six other towns in the Commonwealth. Okay. There's no. also. Go ahead, Dor. I'm sorry. I, I just Evan's been waiting to speak for quite a while now. Um, Evan. Yeah, so uh, first I want to thank the sponsors for being so receptive to the committee's request that we divide the bylaw. I think this is a much more digestible um, bylaw and it's certainly something um, that uh, I'm in support of um, for the reasons that you listed with regard to the, the problems that come with facial recognition. Um, I had just two questions. Um, so you just meant you just cited a number of communities that have those. And so anytime we're passing something that another community has, I, I like to look at what they passed to see how similar. And so I, I picked up Cambridge's, um, which is very similar, I'm assuming is possibly a model of what um, and the one of the differences I saw, and I'm just curious if this matters. It, both of my questions, I'm, I'm, you're perfectly willing, uh, you can send me you're overthinking this, Evan. Um, but I noticed that um, Cambridge's says um, unlawful to obtain, retain, request access, or use. And we have 
request, access, or use, but not the obtain, retain. And I was, guess I was wondering, does that matter? Does the, the absence of those two words allow things, you know, to, you know, the retention, like if, because, and I guess, and here's, here's, I guess the thought behind this is you, you have the, it's uh, an exemption of if they get it incidentally, right. Or accidentally, but then if they get it accidentally, could they lawfully retain it? I guess, because that retain is not there. I guess I'm just, and I don't want to get nitpicky and you can tell me that I'm overthinking this, but I, that was a difference I noticed and I wondered if it mattered. Um, no, thank you. Thank you for pointing that out. That is actually one of the removals we did um, in response to staff concern. We had a lot of concern from the IT department that all of this software is already in a bunch of stuff and that they would have a hard time obtaining software for, say, our computers that we're using now because it's built into the device um, and they can't buy it without the software being built in. Um, mm -hmm. So we removed the obtain and retain um, so that that concern of um, IT staff that they wouldn't be able to purchase things um, because it's now sort of a standard type of software um, from the prohibition so that they, you know, so that they can purchase a computer or a phone um, that has this standardized software in it, but then it just can't be used. Um, I, that was the obtain. I, I think we thought retain might be similar to that, Pat. I can't remember. We would probably be willing to add retain back in if there is a concern that the um, inadvertent um, obtaining of it should be then immediately deleted. Okay. Th um, thanks. I, I would have assumed that, that, that their concern would have been obviated by B to B, but you're saying even with that exemption, they still felt as though yes. it was a problem. Okay, interesting. Well, that, that uh, exemption allows for the use of it. Um, yeah, it, it, we're just sort of covering our bases, I guess, is, okay. is what we would say. And, and the second thing, and again, I, I, I'm very likely just overthinking this, but I was, I was reading um, the suppression, which to me is sort of like the most, well, the second most important, the most important part is the ban, but maybe the second most important part is the suppression if the ban is violated. Um, and I guess I'm just curious, so no data collected or derived from any use of face surveillance or face surveillance system in violation of this bylaw. So I'm, I guess I'm curious, because the inadvertent or accidental acquisition is technically exempted and therefore not in violation, if, if someone on town staff gets accidentally sent data that was derived from facial recognition, would this bylaw still suppress the use of that in any type of proceeding, even though it wasn't technically in violation of the bylaw? It may not. That, that is a good catch that I think both Pat and I would like to probably get rid of. Like, and that, and that language does mirror say, Cambridge's. Do that? But it mirrors Cambridge's, yeah. They have. But I guess but, that was my curious. If someone, if a town staff member, a police officer accidentally obtained information that was used in facial recognition, could they say, well, it was accidental, so it wasn't a violation of the bylaw, so we're still going to use it. It doesn't have to be suppressed, is I guess my question. Right, it should be suppressed. And I thought originally we had something in there about accidental receipt of, but um, we, I, I just went to that one. We have that they can't request it, um, did not request or solicit any of that, and that they log it right in the biannual. But it doesn't necessarily say that they can't, th if they it. accidentally receive it, that they can't then use it. And I, my assumption or my personal belief is they shouldn't be able to use it, even if they get it accidentally. You're absolutely yeah. right. So I think deleting that five word phrase would take care of that issue. Yeah. And those are my two questions. Thank you. Um, so I have I have a quick question, and that is, um, our uh, body cams that our police have, they do not include facial recognition. Is that correct? Our police department doesn't have body cameras. They have dashboard cameras in their cars. Those are different things. And they and don't have it, do they? I do not know whether they are capable or whether they, or the, 
So, so the camera itself, I don't know whether has the software installed to do facial recognition at point of time. And I do not know whether the town itself sends, could send that off then to run it through a database. I, I believe last week or last meeting that this was talked about, uh, the chief, I think he indicated that he had no intention at this point in time of acquiring something like that because of its issues with identification. Right. Um, I, I think that was his comment. So even if it has the capability, my understanding is it, it's not being used right now. Okay. Um, I just would like to make a comment that, that I, um, I did some, you know, some research on this and I just feel like there, there are, you know, there's a long list of reasons why this is a good idea and it's very future focused. I, I appreciate the, the sponsors bringing it forward because um, it's very future faced and, um, you know, there's a lot of worrisome things going on with, um, you know, people's privacy being invaded. And so, um, you know, I agree that a big reason is because of the, um, the way it can be used um, in a discriminatory manner. But um, I think that there are also a whole long list of other privacy concerns that are equally um, important. So I also see George has a comment. Yeah, um, we got our power back magically. So, <laughs> um, just a question, and I'm sure I just, uh, just my lack of knowledge of these sorts of things is the issue, but under enforcement, um, it's the, uh, I think the numbers are right on my copy, uh, number two violation, not, uh, yes, the last sentence, no monetary damages shall be allowed in any legal proceeding for any alleged injuries arising out of any alleged violations of this bylaw. I guess I just don't understand that. It, it sounds like we're, uh, the town and its bylaw is um, sort of instructing a court as to what can or cannot be done. Um, but I, I just don't understand this. So if you could just clarify how the bylaw can state that there cannot be monetary damages in a legal proceeding. Um, I just, what does it, that mean, I guess? I, it means that they can't sue for dollar for their injury. That, that what, if, if someone's rights are violated under this, or if the town violates the bylaw and surveils someone and that person say, you know, that picture that I was talking about before is run through a face recognition technology and the cops arrest a person that was identified for it, whether that person was the right person or not, whether it was misidentified or not. Um, the suit that can be brought for violation of this bylaw is a suit essentially for suppression or injunctive relief. It is not a suit for monetary damages. So, And, and we can do that. We can say that. Um, so I can't, if my rights have been violated, this bylaw doesn't allow me to sue for monetary damages. I just, yeah, okay. I mean, we'll so run this by the lawyers. Case and, there, but that the yeah. person who was identified using that software would not be able to get. Um, I mean, it seems like suing is what I'd want to do, and I'd want monetary damages for, for this infringement of my rights. Um, so, but this says I can't do it, as basically as I understand it. And I don't see how you can do that, but that might be perfectly fine. So maybe it's a question for a KP law. I don't know. It just allows for injunctive and declaratory relief. That's that's the categories of relief that are listed. Um, any Love other? Mandy. Oh dear. Oh dear. Um, we had Bill Newman from the ACLU look over this, and he did not uh, look at that and say that's not possible. And he looked at it fairly carefully but that is something that we would want to check. I don't know how much of that answer you guys heard. I got kicked out None halfway through. No. <laughs> no, it's <laughs> it like many. I'm talking and everyone's frozen. So yeah, so George, you're right. Um, 
since I don't know how much you heard, I'll, I'll repeat it again. Um, the, the bylaw allow, essentially prohibits monetary damages. So if a person, uh, is video is captured and then the police say, run it through a system and then charge someone, not only can that, that evidence not be used for the, the criminal matter, but if that person would choose to sue the town for violation of the bylaw, um, the, the relief granted under the bylaw is not money to the person who sues. Um, it is things like you have to stop using the software and the injunctive relief and declaratory relief that yes, they violated the bylaw, but not we're, the town has to pay you money. And it's, it's my understanding that that type of prohibition is allowed to be written into things like this. Um, it, it is in Cambridge as it is in many others. Um, and it's, it's, in some sense, it's not unusual to be written into bylaws is my understanding. And Mandy, I just said that Bill Newman looked at this and had gone through it care fairly carefully and had not come up and said, oh, no, you can't do that. You, yeah. you can sue for money. Um, okay, Dorothy. Well, I, I can understand that people say that, but, you know, we can't, it's, it's, it's like there's lots of things in the law where that something is stated like that because that's what you hope. But somebody can or possibly can or will sue using some other law against it. Because otherwise we'd write down, you can't sue me for this, you can't sue me for that. And somebody would say, oh, yes, I can if I feel like it. Um, I, I will vote for this because I understand the impulse behind it. But what exists, exists. Think of those things in, in, in property, police property rooms that sat there for 20 years. And then DNA science got better. And it got things pulled out and got used. And some of the, and many of these things are being used in the Innocence Project. So many of the uses are, in fact, good and not evil. But I, I think the horse is out of the barn. And I, I see this as a symbolic step to try to stop things from moving in the direction they're moving. Uh, and I think they're moving, it, truthfully, in a dangerous uh, direction in terms of privacy. Um, so I, I will support it. But I, I, I believe it's, it's like a, a house of straw. Uh, but it's what we've got. So. Alyssa. I was just going to add that um, you've all done a lot of educating of all of us already as this has gone through the steps, but when it's ready to go to town council, um, maybe our TSO report could mention amongst the various things that we've just mentioned that it would be super helpful to have another FAQ specifically on those two items, one about the monetary damages that's just like why you know, because that's the standard, what exactly we just talked about. So it doesn't seem like you're having to explain it after the fact. And the other is, since obviously not all town counselors are aware that we don't have body cameras in use right now, that should be specifically mentioned. We don't have body cameras, we do have dash cams. And then that specific question as to whether or not the dash cams have that software. And you referenced that earlier, Mandy Joe, in terms of the chief's answer. And obviously things could change over time uh, as per the rest of the bylaw to come back to us. But in terms of this particular part at this particular moment, I think people are going to make assumptions about what we have now if you don't address it right up front. So thank you for continuing to educate everybody on that. Yeah. George, did you have something else? Yeah, just, uh, uh, I don't know if I'm channeling Andy here. Uh, maybe I shouldn't pick on him, but um, I guess I get, I'm getting nervous with the way we're, we're, we're creating bylaws to deal with uh, future problems. Um, how would this be different? Uh, what, what if we were to instruct the town manager that we don't want any department doing this? So not using a bylaw, but simply um, communicating to the town manager that um, we want some kind of memo or whatever, just some kind of instruction from the executive that this kind of um, uh, uh, use is not to be permitted in the town of Amherst. Why, why is a bylaw the way to address this rather than um, an instruction from the town council? Because um, I'm struggling with that just a bit. I, I wouldn't have any problem with that, but bylaws raise all kinds of issues and, and complexities and it seems, um, well, maybe that's just the way we have to go. But could somebody help me understand why this is preferable to an instruction um, to the town manager that um, we don't want this to be used in Amherst and we would spell out what we're talking about. Um, an instruction can be ignored 
Um, and if this, this technology is incredibly inaccurate and people have spent time in jail in prison because of this technology, um, I think that it, it beho since the state has not passed any kind of facial recognition ban, it's up to municipalities to lead on this issue. And I understand that it seems like the future, but the future kind of is now, um, who said that? Timothy Leary, maybe. Um, but it, it really seems to me that we are stating a position and demanding not only that the town manager follow this bylaw, but that the police department, that all public officials follow, follow this because of the danger of inaccuracy and for the particularly because it impacts the BIPOC community, the Asian community, it impacts women. Uh, of color and women more than it does. It's only 100% accurate with white men. That's the, that's the truth of the technology. Well, um, technology will change now. And I think the objection, yeah, but, the, you the know, objection Pat, is, that, is to the use of the technology at all. And that I understand. But if it's, if it's just the other argument, then eventually the technology will improve. So this, this is not really about technology. It's about a use of technology. That, right. that threatens people's privacy. Right. And it does threaten people's privacy, but you ask why we don't just tell the town manager what to do. Because he has an independent streak. No. <laughs> um, I mean, I, I think quite literally, uh, we are saying this is technology that the town of Amherst will not use, even if it gets better. I mean, there are exigent circumstances if, if there are, perhaps that's in the other bylaw, I'm more confused than ever. Um, if, the, if the police came to us, the town, meaning the town council, and said, these are the reasons why we need this, it could be, the usage could be reconsidered. But I don't know, Mandy Jo, you can probably do a better job of this. It, and it, I mean, my answer would be town managers change. Uh, bylaws are enforceable memos of agreement are not. Right. Um, and so if this is important enough to the council, it should be in a bylaw, not in a memo of agreement. Yeah. Um, Alyssa, do you have something else? Yes, I can't emphasize that enough, what Van Dijo and Pat just said. I've worked with six different town managers. We've never done orders in this town. Hey, Aaron's here now, he could vouch for that. We've never done orders in this town, except for these new financial orders, since we're under the new form of government. Um, memos fade from memory, as well as from even being able to find them, literally. So this, given the importance of this issue, I absolutely agree that this belongs in a bylaw. Let's also remember that when it comes to evaluation, for example, George, something you're very familiar with, with GOL, um, we all have different senses of priority as to how important the various things are that we agreed as a town council were the town manager's performance goals. And this was is not something I want to be subject to a performance goal as to whether or not this happens. I want this to be the law of the community is this until of course technology changes and we need to update it. Any other comments? I think we may be ready for a motion. Um, it sounds to me like we, we are. And um, uh, Evan. Yeah, um, I, I'm, I guess I'm, I'm just curious. During this meeting, um, Mandy edited the bylaw I'm assuming those edits are things that both Pat and Mandy are agree. And so if we do make a motion, we're making a motion on the amended yes. version. Okay, yes. that's just need that clarification. I'm good to go. Would anyone like to make that motion? I would be glad to, but if anybody else wants to. Um, I move that we uh, approve the face recognition technology, we recommend to, we, I, move, I, I move that we recommend to the town council um, 
that they approve the face recognition technology bylaw as amended. Does that sound correct? I would just swap out approve with adopt because I think we adopt bylaws, right? Adopt. Okay. And I know I'm not a member of the committee, but the title of the bylaw is prohibition on the municipal use of face recognition technology. Okay. <laughs> and um, I, will, I can second that. Okay. Discussion. I see hands. Are they current hands? Alyssa? George? Okay. No current hands. All right. All those in favor? Um, Alyssa? Yes. Darcy, yes. Dorothy? Yes. Evan? Yes. George? Yes. Okay. Unanimous. Thank you very much. Thank you. So now we move on to GOL. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and will it, will it go to KP Law? At that point, it will go to KP Law. Okay. I assume, George, <laughs> you're, you're, you're the chair. <laughs> it's going to KP Law. <laughs> oh, and it will not. Um, so. George, you got to open up your heart and your mind to other lawyers as well. <laughs> uh, they work for us, Pat. I think this is really something that I really have to make a statement. Um, they work for us. They represent the town of Amherst and its interests. The ACLU and, and the other lawyers that have come before us, their, their contributions are welcome, but they do not work for us. And that doesn't mean that we accept what they say. And we have in the past, I know there's a case where Evan raised it, a very good objection to something they wrote that we simply couldn't understand. So I have no problem with going back to them and asking for clarification. I have no problem with disagreeing with them, but I really am getting a little tired of viewing them as just another bunch of lawyers that happen to be out there. Um, they are our attorneys and they look out for the interests of the town of Amherst. And so I take what they say very seriously. Um, that doesn't mean I will agree with them, but they definitely will see it and uh, hopefully they will do a good job. We've had another problem with them as we know, um, but when they do do what they're supposed to do, I think it's important that we all take it seriously and we read it and think about it, which I know I we do. I do take it seriously. And I, in meetings with them, I have taken it seriously, but we really need to look at the quality of their work long term and, and separate from whatever I'm sponsoring or not sponsoring. So. Okay, I think we can move on now. Yeah, um, sorry. Uh, we'll fight later, George. <laughs> thank you all. Thank all you. Right. Thank you. Thank you, Pat. So, congratulations. Um, so, um, our next piece is presentation and discussion items of which we have one. Um, uh, our next agenda item is a presentation from the chair of the Transportation Advisory Committee, Aaron Hayden. The committee, um, the TAC committee met last week for the first time since before the pandemic. Um, and I, I'm the liaison from the town council to the committee, and also I'm the liaison from the ECAC to the to TAC. Um, and um, I, in the packet is the TAC charge and materials that Alyssa gathered regarding background of TAC. Um, and I, I was going to read the charge, but then I looked again at it <laughs> and it's, it's really long. It's got multiple, multiple bullets of what it is charged with doing, um, including, you know, Alyssa noted um, that at the end it includes that it shall take the place of the functions of the Public Works Committee, the Public Transportation, Bicycle and Pedestrian Committee, and the Downtown Parking Working Group once the working group has completed its initial phases of work. That was an earlier iteration of the downtown parking working group. Um, so um, uh, it, it might have been unnecessary uh, to have this on the agenda, but hopefully it'll still be helpful. The reason I put it on this agenda was I put it on 
of our, our, for our future agenda before TAC decided to have its first meeting. So uh, now that it has sort of decided to get started meeting again and, and, and the members decided to meet every couple of weeks, um, I'm not completely sure why we're hearing from TAC today, but I, I'm, I, like I said, I hope that it still will be helpful because there are a lot of ways in which our charge is ki kind of overlaps what TAC does. Um, so, and I'm hoping that um, one of the things that Aaron will cover in his remarks is the value of resident involvement and input to the town manager and to the town council and and um, um, so I, I welcome Aaron Hayden and um, he's going to be giving us a presentation on TAC. Yeah, well, th thank you all for, for uh, inviting me and, and, and taking time and, and it's clearly a, a very busy agenda. I'm, I'm impressed. Um, I, uh, so, so there are two questions, I guess, that, that, that uh, you're asking. One is, uh, you know, why are we worried about, why are we coming to you? Why are we worried about meeting? And um, I guess it's because I was a little worried that um, um, we didn't have anybody to give advice to. You know, our principal job is to advise. Um, I'm going to set that aside and um, try to boil the, um, the charge down into what we felt, we feel, are uh, its most important elements. Um, principally, uh, what's most important about it to us is that uh, it establishes us as um, our, our primary purpose is to be an effective communication, effectively communicate transportation issues, wishes, concerns with whomever, and, and the whomever is public works, a town manager, and uh, town council, of course. Um, the, what's, what's important about the very brief history that, that Darcy mentions about um, it being pushed together from three different committees is that, uh, well, for me anyway, is that every one of the 50 some odd committees that have been created in the town of Amherst and were in place two years ago, each one of them came into an existence because there was a community concern, a community issue that um, we wanted or it was desired that there was some group that had a task to deal with that, to understand that issue and help, you know, town meeting and the select board in those days um, understand and you know, do good work with that. Um, and that's, that's kind of, you know, we, we take that responsibility. Um, we understand that responsibility. We take it very seriously. So the importance, and I'm, I'm kind of, I'm glad that, that, um, that Darcy asked the question specifically why, you know, how, how is the communication is important? Why is it important to communicate with the community? I hadn't imagined, um, well, I, I hardly need to tell view as counselors why communication is important. Um, in the case of transportation though, um, it's, uh, it may be a little bit different in that uh, transportation affects all of us every day, somehow or other. Either we're driving or we're trying to cross the street. Um, you know, we're all affected by it. We all interact with it. Um, it just we're, we're, we're handicapped and we're trying to walk on a sidewalk. These are all transportation issues that we have every day. Um, and um, in the old days anyway, I'm sure this hasn't changed much, there was a flood of requests that would come in to public works, uh, the town manager's office, the select board for all kinds of things related to transportation among everything else, of course, but in transportation specifically now. And there was always, or there was often a you know, sort of difficulty in answering the question, well, how do we establish the communication with this? Because the answers 
um, you know, really fall into a couple of different groups. And, and you know, if the, if the communication comes to the group that doesn't have that answer, you know, if the, if the, the select board got the request to repair a pothole, select boards don't repair potholes, but the works does. Um, so part of what we understand and take, you know, take as, as our principal charge is being communicated to or sort of understanding what the requests are. And I, I use the word requests because I'm not smart enough to think of a better word, but the requests that come in. And um, we want to, um, we try to categorize them, try to put them into one of five different types. Um, and um, I'm going to have to look them up because, um, you know, they kind of always, they're changing a little bit, but um, many requests that come to the town, and I'll use that word broadly, um, are for uh, enforcement or maintenance. Um, you know, hey, I saw somebody speeding, I need. Uh, I saw somebody run through that intersection, I want. There's a pothole, the, the, the stripes are not painted. Um, and there's certainly one way to handle those. Um, there are also uh, requests that involve um, policies. Hey, you know, we'd like the speed limit all over town to be 25 miles an hour. Um, there are requests for planning. Um, you know, let's let us establish safe routes to school so that we can uh, have parents be comfortable with allowing their children to get to school without having to be driven. Um, so anytime, you know, you, so getting back to the communication, anytime you get a kind of one of those requests, there's a different level of communication that one needs to uh, enter into to be effective in answering that request. Um, like I say, in the case of enforcement or maintenance, you know, the police department, public works, they are people who have to know about that and take care of it. Um, if it's a matter of, of planning, you know, improving an intersection, um, there's a little more involved. We have to engage the community with um, the, the neighborhood specifically, who's most effective, the sort of most important stakeholder in an intersection. We want to engage them directly in a manner that's effective for them to communicate to us um, and then through us to the, uh, the town council. Um, as an example of that, when uh, we were considering the planning around the South Amherst intersection, around the, South, uh, the, around the common, um, you know, we had a couple of public meetings where we sat with the people who live there, the people who drive through there. And we also established kind of, it's amazing how the word gets out and we began to get all kinds of, of, of correspondence from people who also use that intersection, but don't live there. Um, so uh, if it, when it comes to policy, for instance, um, there is a little more, there's, there's the outreach of the community is different, but the level of research that needs to be uh, communicated to the town council um, is, is much higher. You know, there, there's, there's pouring through regulations and it's, it's, it's amazing um, how cur it's curious how regulations around transportation change so frequently. I mean, what is an acceptable design for a crosswalk changed you know, twice last year. Um, and you know, our, the guidelines that we're offering you to sort of consider as being what guides how crosswalks are installed in town um, had to be modified. Um, also for policy, um, when the policy involves state regulations like the um, the uh, complete streets policy, which, which you adopted almost a year ago now, um, there was a different level of, of uh, dealing with stakeholders and getting examples from different parts of the country. Um, so the importance of communication, to answer the question directly, um, is that nothing is simple in transportation. It's, you know, uh, Issues that are seem to be very specific to this one place, when you pay attention and have heard that, geez, you know, there was a similar concern a block away, 
at the same intersection and then to realize that the issue is not that intersection, but that piece of road. Or, um, it, you know, the issue is not that bicycle, but, you know, that there is not infrastructure to support bicycles. Um, so really what I'm hopeful um, to, to get tonight, I guess, is an affirmation that, um, that this form of communication, which has been established, is one, and it's not in conflict with the task that, that you have set for yourself, the TSO. Uh, rather, I see it as complementary. Um, uh, in, in, you know, I, I don't know how to describe it so much as saying that, you know, we're happy to be the, the people who organize the charrette over this design or have that open meeting or do the research so that the, the, the regulations are understood and can be presented. Uh, we're also happy to, to organize the work to um, you know, figure out, and we're in the middle, for instance, of putting together the, um, uh, our vision and what we hope would become the plan for pedestrian for improving and maintaining and, and building um, the pedestrian, the bicycle network in, in around town. Um, one of the things that we noticed is that the road forms in town, which we think of primarily as transportation, um, many of them were established in the early 18th century that are still with us today. Um, the last big improvement to the road, big, big change to the road form happened almost 50 years ago. We've not moved away from let's build it so cars can go through here more rapidly. Um, and that's not how we use our streets anymore. We want people to stop and, you know, shop. We want people, we just want to move them through, you know. Uh, we want the streets to support um, transit. Um, this is another function that, that uh, another communication that, that we would offer, which is to keep tabs on how transportation is going um, when the B49 was going to be taken away from the center of town, you know, this was an issue that we needed to communicate and get on top of. Um, fortunately, it's still coming downtown, so we will continue to have a direct bus service between Northampton downtown and Amherst downtown. Um, things that, that we have missed in the last six months since, since we've been uh, in hiatus, during our pandemic um, has, for instance, has been the, um, the final draft of the changes to Northampton Road between the intersection at Pleasant Street and um, University Drive. Um, the 100% drawings uh, were they're not quite approved, the draft of they're being sent around. Um, and, you know, just by, because I'm nosy, um, you know, I find out that in fact, all the recommendations that we made, that the town asked for, that went into that, were in fact implemented. Um, Jason has one small thing that he wants to change. I, I hope he can do that. But otherwise, um, so the work is continuing and, and we've, we've felt a little bit on the side, uh, uh, you know, because, well, we haven't, we haven't had the regular communication with you all. Um, and we, we see, you know, things happening that are kind of leaving us out. Uh, and we're, we're anxious. It's, it's um, I want to, uh, I guess, remind everybody of how, how great this, this, this committee is. They're, they're very energetic. They put a lot of time and effort into it. Um, one of our big uh, efforts in, uh, in organizing the communication is to build the, um, uh, sort of a decision tree so we can, we can um, uh, you know, when, when we're trying to prioritize work, what do we want to go to first and what I have second, you know, we'd like to have an objective tool for that. Well, you know, uh, three of our members um, meet in between our annual, our, our semi-monthly meetings to do that work. And they've gathered together a lot of, they have a subcommittee and they've gathered together a lot of resources. And they're doing a lot of work to do that. Um, so I do want to advertise um, their willingness and their energies, and I'm going to stop now and answer questions. Thank you very much, Aaron. That was that was very helpful. Um, 
so I am not completely sure what we're going to be asking questions about, but um, I, you know, open it up in general. Alyssa has had her hand up for a while, if that's current. And I went on and on. <laughs> Thank you so much, Erin. Um, and I'm glad we went ahead and did this because it might feel a little bit like we're picking on TAC, but TAC is just one of the many committees that we have in the town of Amherst that doesn't have a requirement to exist under mass general law, like say a conservation commission, or by town bylaw, say the human rights commission, or by town meeting action, or really any reason at all. So I find it a little strange when before Aaron spoke, Darcy, when you referenced like, well, they just want to meet because they want to. Well, so what? They get appointed to do a certain job. They don't just get to keep meeting because they want to, because they had before this particular form of government took place. A committee that exists doesn't just get to exist because it wants to exist. It's supposed to exist because it's supposed to be fulfilling a charge. And so um, we kept referencing TAC at both town council and at TSO. And then we we're like, well, I guess we shouldn't be talking about them unless we talk with them. Wouldn't that be great? So I'm really glad that we're doing that. I appreciate Darcy that you've been a liaison to TAC, but as they indicated, they haven't met. So there was no official liaison time for that to happen. And when we talk about communication between the bodies, there's been almost none, partly because the pandemic, obviously, for the last part of time. But before that, it's because there was not a structure for communication between the TAC, the town manager, and the select board, then the TAC, the town manager, and town council, aside from the individual projects like Complete Streets, which was great. I mean, it's, it's, they're doing terrific work. We just need to understand how we can all work effectively together so they feel like they're getting done the things that excited them to be on the committee in the first place, that the town manager is getting the advice he feels like he needs from different places, and that TSO and town council feel like we're getting the advice we need. And again, not picking on TAC, and although TAC is really special, as Aaron said, from the stamp, from many standpoints but partly because of it does affect everything everybody right whether you ride a bus you walk on the sidewalk whatever it really does affect everyone and so if we don't have some way of figuring out how we can effectively use their resources and time to help TSO make appropriate recommendations to the town council or for the town manager to maybe talk to them before he brings something to the town council that he's been tossing around based on his department head meetings. If we don't have that kind of communication, then they're kind of just being treated as an afterthought. And we don't want to do that. We don't want to like start a whole process and then say, oh yeah, transportation, we have a committee for that, don't we? And so we want to make sure that it's integrated in some fashion, because if it's not going to be integrated, then what's the point of it? I mean, it needs to be advising somebody and it's not advising anybody right now, not just because of the pandemic, but because of the way it was, you know, the transition and the fact that there was not a strong communication path way back in the past either. So having that is really important. And one of the things that I think we, you know, I'm really glad that Aaron was able to come and I believe Tracy's here too. And I really appreciated that Tracy and Eve came last time is just trying to figure out how to use all this energy effectively together so that they don't feel per se used as our research arm, but effectively used and as our research arm, because we've talked about how, you know, we don't have any expertise on the town council in these areas. I mean, sorry, but aside from me and Andy, you guys don't know anything about the public way, you know, zero. So TAC, knows a lot about this because they've been doing it a lot of different ways, coming at it from a lot of different approaches. So I would love to hear their opinion on more things. And we just, I think we just need to figure out when to make that happen. The other thing I just want to refer back to on the charge itself, because you all know that I so stupidly volunteered to help work on the charges, is that you can't necessarily one-to-one -one sub some things here in terms of advice. But the one thing that's really missing from the TAC situation that is something that is not their fault. It has existed since time began, to the best of my knowledge. Maybe we'll find a select board member who's 87 years old who remembers it differently. 
but is that no one has ever fulfilled bullet point two in the TAC charge, which is to establish and periodically update a work program that tracks all these things that Aaron so carefully described in terms of how stuff just constantly comes in, right? Somebody calls the town manager, somebody calls public works, somebody calls the town engineer because they know him, somebody calls the town counselor, I want a stop sign, I want a speed limit. There's zero process for managing that. There never has been in the 20 years I've been involved in town government. So understanding from TAC what they think would be helpful that way and then maybe some input from counselors who've already been getting requests like that as to how that would work I think could be there could be some incredible synergy here between TAC and TSO and then eventually the town council to actually implement the things TAC wants because TAC can't really do much of anything in the end without having town council support or the town manager's support. And so we wanna make sure that they're gonna to get to the end, their end goals. But we also, I think, wanna make clear that we have a place for people to go with those concerns because otherwise people are again, gonna to start coming to town council saying, I wanna stop sign. And we don't know what we're gonna do with that. Thank you, Alyssa. Did you wanna to respond to that at all, Aaron? Or, um... Uh, very briefly, uh, which is to say, yes, thank you for, for making all of that clear. And also, um, um, I'd like to offer that uh, we can say no um, to requests. And uh, uh, sometimes that maybe is the most helpful thing to do. Um, George. Uh, two things. Um, one is just a request um, that you consider um, revising your charge in light of the change in government. And uh, I don't know if that's something that you and your um, committee would, would be willing to do, but it, I think it would be helpful. Um, the second is just, I wanna be clear in my own mind what documents are out there that, um, that you use and that you've created related to transportation. And so I'm trying to make a list. I wonder if you could just help me with um, what I might be missing. So, um, the Amherst Master Plan obviously is one important document. There's a transportation plan that was created in 2015. And I believe that that has not been revised or amended in any way. So that's a second document. There's a bike and pedestrian plan that is about to be presented to us or to the community. Uh, about is an interesting term, but yes, we're, we're close to finishing it. Okay, but that would be a third document. There's the complete streets. That's that is a document, correct? That's something that I'm mean, just trying to look it up now. But the complete streets is 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 a, is the fourth. Um, is that right? That's right. Okay. And um, the last that I remember vaguely from when I was I would come by occasionally and, and <laughs> enjoyed them very much, sitting in on TAC meetings and just listening. But um, I did get the sense that you were working on a list of priorities, um, somewhat like what Alyssa was referring to, or was that something completely different? I, this is my bad memory, but I, I thought there was, a, uh, related to the subcommittee perhaps that you described earlier, and that they are trying to also bring about some kind of, of document that would be a kind of priori prioritizing of transportation matters. Is that is that right, or is that, I've got that completely confused. No, no, you've got that completely correct. The um, the idea um, is sort of you know, among the tasks that that we're organizing um, are you know capital projects and and larger things and um, we are trying to come up with a, a, a mechanism a process um, for objectively evaluating what is the value of this project over that project. How can we offer advice on reason we're going to pick this as opposed to that. So that that is a document that is being worked on and, and um, so yes, you're exactly right on that. And that, that would be an internal document, essentially something that you would create for the committee to use in, in their own work. Yes, and um, we would clearly offer it to the town council is saying, this is how we're working in bringing something forward to you. Um, 
sort of part of the communication. It's a dialogue to understand that those are, so one of the things that we learned when we were putting this document together is that what the town, what the community values, what's important to the community is changes over time. And so, so we realized that we had left out of this document uh, the whole thing about uh, of you know justice, sort of you know racial justice in evaluating things. So it turns out, you know, that's important to us, and it's something that can be evaluated and and ought to be out front. Um, so we would want you to look at that, you the, the council, the people who would be taking decisions based on it. We're offering advice on the decision that we might recommend, but we would want to get you know have it not as a completely secret internal document, but one that would be shared. And I take it that that's an exhaustive list, or can you add anything else to that that, that, I should, that we should be aware of that uh, helps guide your work and what you use when you're, you're doing your work? Those five, I've got a list of five things now. Five documents. Yeah, I, oh, 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 oh well, I was wondering, wait, okay, which list? The list on the, on the, the, the uh, uh, the prioritization or so no, no, no. Um, these are the, um, the documents <laughs> that basically define um the, the domain that you work in so the master plan transportation plan of 2015 the uh, soon to be uh, hopefully delivered bike and pedestrian plan um complete streets document and this uh document that your subcommittee is working on which is prioritizing um how to evaluate projects uh, we also have a very small document, which is our intake form, which is our attempt at, you know, sort of the very beginning of a dialogue um, with the community at organizing, you know, which, you know, what we're going to do. Where, what, and so uh, everybody can understand what the process might be that's going to be followed. Um, we also have the... Um, um, the uh, the regulations about what you can do with streets, you know, you know, all oh man, it's a, it's a, that that's the one that keeps changing every once in a while. Where uh, describing you know corners and speed limits and signs and traffic intersect, how all of that's kind of stuff. That's a state document. That's a state regulation that um, is in our world. Um, we also have uh, the sidewalk the um, the crosswalk guidelines that we uh, put together where we describe sort of minimum requirements for how crosswalks work. Um, similarly, we're, we're, we would want to put together one for how sidewalks work. So sort of some, again, guideline, you know, we're not going to build or repair a sidewalk um, to an inferior or a, an unuseful in an unusual way, and the guideline will help us understand, what, uh, help us communicate what that way ought to be. Um, also, um, I mean, they're going to be, as, as we tackle different types of issues um, over time and understand better what has to be communicated in that dialogue back and forth, I'm sure there are going to be other guidelines and processes that we uh, will end up or promulgating um, the the um, the pedestrian, the bicycle and pedestrian plan that we're working on. Um, actually, we were able to take advantage of some resources that were available from the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission um, to be able to. Now, we've always wanted to do that. It's very important work that we've had, but we were able to take advantage of that opportunity to to get a lot of work done. Um, and the step that's left, just by the way, on that is. Um, to complete the maps, which we um, want to do, uh, maybe take a draft within the, uh, the committee itself, but we have a sense that there wants to be some a larger community. I mean, you remember, George, I think when we put all the stuff on the table, we were marking with pens. We think that we'd like to do this, something like that one more time, just to get to connect all of those red lines that, that we began to develop. So, um, not very many documents, but they're quite engaging. Uh, it's like quite a few. Um, I come up with nine. Are you um, uh, in need of a few additional members to the committee? Are you down? Are you down a couple? Um, 
I believe that, and I believe we're down one seat. Um, I believe I have to double check that. Yes, there's um, one vacancy. Hi, Guilford. Thank you. Um, yeah, I as uh, as, we're, as we're talking here, it's actually I felt like it is kind of exciting because one of the things that you know one of the problems that this committee has had is just like capacity to put in the kind of work that we need to do on some of the larger issues, the larger town-wide issues. Um, and, you know, the, the possibility of our farming out some of our work to TAC, or to at least ask TAC to come to us with a recommendation about something. Like, for example, you mentioned the, um, the town-wide speed limit change possibility. You know, that's, that's, that's on our list and that's on your list. Um, so that would be something where uh, um, it's a big chunk of work to do the background work necessary to look, you know, to look at best practices uh, to, or to look at what other towns are doing, which ones have adopted a lower speed limit, et cetera. But that would be, in my mind, wonderful to be able to, to go to TAC and say, could you come up with a recommendation about this or could you do the background work on this and come back to us um, with a recommendation or at least uh, a report? Um, yes, exactly. We'd love to do that. They, Maybe the only thing that we're anxious not to take up is parking downtown, but otherwise, absolutely. I, I may have missed something, but I have a few questions here. Um, I don't understand who gives you your tasks. I don't understand who you report to uh, or your relationship to public works in the town council. And, um, that's something I know that we had mentioned that we weren't quite sure about them. But, um, I'm, I'm just having, because some of the stuff you do, it sounds like you're a town department, but I know you're not. So I don't know who you are to or what your authority is. Um, and so that's really what it is. And then some, some, and I, I can see great, um, you know, uh, knowledge and depth. But I think that we need to figure out how that goes, how the, what the power relationship is. And when we do something, because of course, I mean, I was interested in what you said about um, guidelines on crosswalks. I thought, well, I don't think a citizen committee creates those guidelines. Doesn't uh, Guilford um, have access to the general rules on crosswalks? And um, I thought a citizen committee might make a suggestion, but I mean, doesn't Guilford have the say on what it is? Because, I mean, you know, George and I, are we are being besieged with crosswalk issues. So crosswalks is something that we're thinking about. But I don't quite know how we and you and Guilford work together on this. Well, that's, that, that, that's, actually, that's kind of at the heart of our discussion tonight. Um, the, what, what I would offer is that uh, we, we, we're happy to be the wide end of the funnel to get together the data, the community interest, community uh, concerns and ideas, and you know, do whatever it is to come up with uh, sound advice that we would ex imagine could, would be acceptable to offer to, and, and this is probably what the heart of your question is, who, who are we offering it to and what, what is it we're offering? But to the town council, if there's an issue where they have to figure out something about modifications to the town way or something that have to do with the town, the public way, that's, you know, there's no power in the TAC. We have no power over that at all. Wouldn't we do have... Government before it comes to the town. I mean, when we do things, the process of work, which we are inventing as we go along, is that we come up with an idea and then we do some consultation with the town um, who is responsible for putting these things into action. 
and then we argue amongst ourselves and hopefully come together with a, an understanding and then the town does the work and carries it out. But am, am I wrong on that? No, that's quite right. And, and we, I'm not interested in getting in the way of the argument. I am interested in um, our, the resource of the TAC engaging okay. with the communication to you so that when you're making that argument, you have some basis in whatever it is. Is it state regulation? Is it um, uh, the result of a survey of a town meeting, some work that was done to, to, to understand and clarify you know, the issues and, and the, the, the aspects of the issue. Um, so that's one, so that our, you know, advice would be to you, as Darcy suggested, hey, we have a question about speed limits in town. How do we think about this? Well, we can do the work, we can do whatever it is and offer you at least the, the seed for the discussion that you'll have amongst yourself. Um, also, I see our, as you read the charge, and it's kind of a kitchen, kitchen sink charge, everything is in there. Um, there is advice that we offer to public works. Um, you know, Guilford has, how do I decide what to do first? Okay, um, this was an important question. And we're trying to answer a way of answering that one in a way that um, you, in your direction of the public works, could, would find is acceptable. You could, you could change your mind. I mean, it's okay to reorder things that we're going to suggest, but at least we want to offer the mechanism for giving a sound and you know, objective decision. Um, and then, um, you know, there's, there's going to be uh, advice. You know, we have been pecking away at um, wondering what a policy for shared um, uh, 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 Bicycles would be what, what is a, what happens when you know Lyme shows up with you know two thousand scooters the way they have in some places, you know will we want to think about that? Well, maybe this is kind of in the future. We've got a, that. We've thought about it. We've got some stuff, um, and if there comes a question, we can answer that. So um, there there's no no idea that there's a power that we are assuming. Uh, but there is an idea that we are um, a conduit, a, a, a way of communicating, a way of collating ideas that have been communicated from the community to you, to the town manager, to public works. Thank you. I'm just doing a time check here. It's 8.15. Um, I don't... We talk long, I know. No, no, no. This, this has been great. Um, uh, I think that um, uh, generally speaking, uh, I think it's just valuable to have this conversation with the Transportation Advisory Committee just so that we can think about how we're going to work together. I don't necessarily think that we need to be taking any particular action. Um, but um, I would kind of like to wrap up the discussion for this meeting because we just have to talk about our future agenda items. Does anybody else have any final thoughts? I see some hands. Paul wants to say something. Well, and I do say I wanted, I would really like to hear from Guilford and Paul. I okay. really Let's I hear from them. I do recognize Alyssa had her hand up first. I'm not sure if that matters. Alyssa, would you like to speak first? I would only because then it won't sound as much like I'm criticizing Guilford. Hi, Guilford. So um, to reiterate what, what Aaron and Dorothy just said, TAC has no power. It is zero power except the power that the town manager gives them by appointing them and by not revoking their appointments and by rewriting their charge or not rewriting their charge and that the town council gives weight to their things to say. So that's why we're saying, let's make this an effective team effort here because we have all this potential work that they could do and that they are doing. And so they are not a town department. They don't decide anything unless somebody decides it's okay for them to decide to give uh, their opinion on something. And um, the reason I said I'd go ahead and talk in ahead is that, again, I don't wanna, uh, 
upset your worldview here, Dorothy, but the reality is that Guilford's not the be all end all of how a crosswalk's designed or placed or not placed. Yes, there are all kinds of rules, all kinds of rules, absolutely. But there are always options. He may tell you that what you're pursuing is a terrible idea, but that doesn't mean it's illegal. He's had those conversations with the select board in the past. And sometimes we've agreed with him and sometimes we haven't. And I imagine the town council will do the same, just as I imagine the TAC probably has a couple of those points where they uh, rub up against what the community thinks they want and what the state thinks is ideal. So that's why it's great to have a body like the TAC, right? Because the TSO would never have time to do all of this, to learn all these amazing types of things. And then if TAC can do that and feels like we're not just dumping on them as a TSO, but is open to this idea of communication. And the final part I just wanna say about that is I'm a little concerned when I hear about the idea of TAC going out to the community to have some bigger public meetings without having discussed that with the council ahead of time. And I'm not telling you to ask permission. Paul knows I have this conversation with him all the time. You're not asking permission. You're just asking for help. Because if you come to us and say, we're going to have some public meetings about this really cool set of maps that we drew that's based on this, that, and the other thing, then we can all say, awesome, we're going to put that in our newsletters, we're going to discuss that at our district meetings, and we're going to twist all the arms we can to show up at that thing. Otherwise, what's going to happen is you're going to go off and have those meetings as a TAC. The town council generally won't even know they existed. Most of the community won't know they existed. Then you'll bring the proposal to the town council, to the TSO or town council, and they'll say, okay, well, what kind of outreach did you do? And they'll say, well, I didn't know anything about that outreach. And then it's like all icky. We've been down that road before. So it, again, it's not permission. It's just finding ways to work together and communicate. I think there's a huge amount of potential here where we could help you and you could help us. So thanks. Thank you, Paul. I'll try to be brief. I know it's getting late. So I think it's, we're in a new world. I think it's important for the council to think, what do we need? Pre pretend the count, the tech doesn't exist. What would you want as a service to the council to make decisions about things that's under your jurisdiction, which is the public way? And the, what I don't want to get into is that you have a body that goes through a whole process that involves the community. And then the council goes through the exact same thing again it frustrates people. They feel like, didn't we just go through this? So if the council is saying, we are going to delegate our authority to another entity, either by bylaw or some other mechanism, then do that, like you, like the license commission or something like that. Or if you're gonna hold on to it and you then designate a com you know this committee or some other committee of the council, then you, you should do it. Because I think what has happened is people find themselves going to this committee to ask for, you know, whatever it is, and then they feel like they have to come back to the council, and it's like, and then it all starts all over again. And I think either the council, so I just think it's a it's a valuable thing to think about. I think the TAC has done tremendous work um, in the past, and respect all the members on the count on the TAC. But I think it's worth it for the council to sort of give it some thought about what would best serve you as keepers of the public way in your decision making process and then go from there. You can look at lots of other communities who have the, we, everybody has the exact same situation we do. Um, you know, everybody's got roads, everybody has community city members of the public who are asking for things. Let's look at how other or communities, you know, cities have organized themselves and they do it in lots of different ways. So I think it's, it's worth spending a little bit of time. Um, I think it's a mistake to say, just because you exist, you should continue to exist it's not the way I run when there's a vacancy in, in the in the in our town staff. I say, let's talk about whether that position needs to be filled. Let's think about it. So that's my, my suggestion to you. Alyssa, did you oh you already spoke? Um, is that it? Um, Guilford, did you want to say anything? You're muted. The only thing I would say is, yes, there needs to be, you need to decide some way of how you want this to interact and what you think is best, because then we can decide how to reallocate resources or what we need to keep doing this. One of the reasons we failed at being able to make some things and do some things is 
um, there's not dedicated resources to it. And we, we pigeonhole it for somebody to do it for a little while. And then that person gets busy with something else and we move it over here and I pigeonhole it over here somewhere. And then maybe some of, one of the planning department does it for a little while for one project. Uh, one of the planners was instrumental in working with the um, Pioneer Valley Planning Commission and the bicycle thing. Um, she's doing other things and she has other things on her plate. The, the, what you want out of this and what you expect, we need to know so we can try to figure out what resources go to it to make it actually work much better because there's a lot that can be done. There's a lot that can be done that's um, a lot simpler than what's being done now, I guess is a good way to say it. If we put the resources to it and we know this is where we're going. Okay, hey, thank you. Um, all right, so I think that we'll just, um, you know, if we want to take it up at another meeting, we can do that. Um, and in the meantime, um, I don't know, do, Dorothy, do you have your hand up for some reason? We have to make a plan. We can't just have had a discussion where we understand that we don't have clear lines of, of demarcation. And whether you wanna have a, a subcommittee work on this, uh, we have to make decisions. So I don't say, well, we had a discussion and we learned some stuff uh, and leave it at that. So um, we need to say what's gonna be our next step and who's gonna work with whom. And I'm not saying I have a suggestion, but I know that we have to make a next step so that we can um, iron out how we would work together. I think that, that the Transportation Advisory Committee is a committee of the town manager. Um, I mean, we have a relationship to it, but we don't really have any authority over it. Is that correct, Paul? Yes, that's my understanding. Uh, so, uh, I think we can make suggestions or uh, to Paul or, but we, this is Transportation Advisory Committee is not our committee, um, but very much related to what we do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, so, George, may I? Uh, George. Thank you. I think, I don't know where this conversation will take place for the council if it doesn't take place here at TSO, at least to start. I mean, we could put it on the council agenda and I'm sure that would be a lot of fun. Um, so why don't we, I think Paul has not put out a challenge, but he's basically said, what do you want? Do you want to give up some of your authority as a town council? What is it that you want? And so it seems like, I mean, Dorothy and I have some questions or issues that we're wrestling with. Um, we're going to be reaching out to Guilford, um, but I think it's a conversation we as the TSO should have and see if we can come to some agreement as to what it is that we want. Do we want to recommend to the town council that some of our authority be handed off to an entirely different body? Not necessarily TAC, but whatever. Do we want to create some other body and, and give them uh, authority over the public way. Um, so I'm not saying I support that or not. I just think it's that's what Paul's asked us to think about. I think it interrelates to some of the things that we've been talking about and listening to today. Uh, it certainly relates to some of the things that Dorothy and I have been talking about. Um, and I think we as TSO, at least for a few minutes next time, hopefully or soon, should have this conversation amongst the five of us and see if there's any consensus agreement um, as to how to proceed. Um, so I would hope this would be on a future agenda. I would like it to be on the next agenda if that's possible. I'd like to continue this conversation amongst the five of us. I'd like to take up Paul's uh, suggestion and see what we all think. Um, I'd like to have us just talk about what we see our relationship with TAC to be, because um, I don't think we've really gotten to, the, to that. We don't have time for it now. Um, and again, I'm just gonna put in this little uh, request. Again, I would like to see TAC rewrite their charge in the face of, of just the fact that the town government has changed. Um, it, when I read it, there's certain things that simply don't apply. There's certain things that simply write, and it would be helpful. I can't write, rewrite it. 
Uh, I don't have that, uh, it's not my role, but it would be helpful if you would um, consider rewriting it so that it re represents the world we live in, at least in terms of the charge. But we as TSO, I think we should talk about this next time. Um, and I'm, I'm getting that the rest of the committee would like to do that. I, conveniently, we have almost nothing on our agenda for the next meeting. So I think that that would be a good time to do that. Um, so, uh, all right. Um, moving on. Thank you so much for coming, Aaron, and um, engaging us in this discussion. Um, and so. Well, thank you indeed. <laughs> and um, like I think Dorothy said, Tracy, I think, has been here too. Um, on the phone because I think she she didn't have power at her house either. Um, so we just have um, minutes. We have. I I noticed that we never um, we never adopted our August twentieth minutes. Um, for some reason, they just got lost. Um, and the minutes from the last meeting. I think we need to do them separately because I can't vote on the last minutes. Um, have people had the chance to look at them? Um, yes. Uh, there's a typo on August 20th, first page. Um, Black Youth Leaders Group and defund, it's just a typo. Should be, a, it's, it, there's a U where there should be an E in the word defund. Okay, I can fix that. Um, any other comments? Um, okay, I move we adopt the minutes of August 20th, 2020 as amended. I second. All those in favor? Um, Alyssa? Abstain. Darcy, yes. Dorothy? Yes. Evan? Yes. George? Yes, sorry, yeah. Oh, that's four and one abstention. Um, and I move that we adopt the um, September 24th, 2020 minutes. Second. Um, all those in favor, Alyssa? Abstain. Uh, I am abstaining too. Uh, Dorothy? Yes. Evan? Yes. George? Yes. Okay, so we got three and two abstentions. Um, okay, the um, announcements, uh, nothing unless anyone else has any announcements. Um, Next meeting agenda preview. Um, I updated the work plan, which is in the packet. Um, it's still pretty bare bones, but <laughs> it's attempting to give an idea what's coming up. Um, like I said, we're going to have the community safety committee um, appointments at the next meeting. We could put we can put TAC on for the next meeting. Um, and then on November 8th, the uh, surveillance technology is coming back with their part two. Um, uh, I did wonder whether we want to hear from Guilford at some point on the, on the townwide parking proposal. Is that something we want to? schedule? Well, um, Darcy, both Dorothy and I are going to reach out to Guilford and follow up on that. And um, so I think we will sound him out on when we would be ready to uh, bring that. So I think um, if you'd let us do the initial outreach, follow up basically on what we had um, on his email to us. Sure. Um, and otherwise, 
Does anyone have any other items that you want to put on future agendas? Dorothy. I had mentioned uh, the question of broadband. I'm not ready to bring it up yet, but um, I wanted to see if there was anybody on this committee that wanted to uh, work on it with me. I, I did, I put it on the list on the work plan. Did you see it there? No, I, I, I looked at everything, but I didn't look at the work plan. Uh, so we'll, we'll, we, can, we can put it on an agenda when you're ready, Dorothy. Um, Alyssa? I just, uh, two quick things. One was, I don't think the work plan's in the public packet. I could be mistaken, but I don't see it there. And so it just seems like we might as well include it there too, mainly because I hate SharePoint. So I mostly use just the work, the public packet, because I want to see what the public's seeing. Um, I only feel like confidential stuff needs to be in SharePoint. But aside from all that, um, is the, so we could probably publish that more publicly next time. And then the other thing was just a matter of practice that maybe we could talk about at some point, which is associated with vote order while we're continuing in this lovely Zoom environment. Not that I don't mind go, that I, that I mind putting my vote first every time, but I know that we don't, we do rotate it in council and I just wanted to see if TSO wanted to briefly discuss whether or not they wanted to rotate that as well so that there wasn't always one person that went first? Uh, yeah, I could see where that would put you in a hot spot, Alyssa. <laughs> um, I would be glad to do that and hope that I could handle it and remember what I did the last time. Um, so, <laughs> George. I don't have any suggestion. I think it's a perfectly reasonable request. Um, you could always just do reverse alphabet. You could start in the middle. You could just mix it up. I don't know, but um, it'd be just random, right? It'd be a surprise each time. Put me in the hot seat, for instance, <laughs> today's vote. Not that it made any difference, but uh, no, I was no, glad to have Elizabeth go first. Yeah, it's a little too rote to do it the same same way every time. Um, so that's all I have. Um, let me just check and see if there's any uh, any public comment. No. I'll wait a second. Oh, we get, do have a public comment. Um, all right. So I am going to, uh, this person is on the telephone, and I'm going to bring him or her in. And if you could just identify yourself. You're on. Hi, um, this was Tracy Zapian. Um, so um, I had tried to, I had um, connected online earlier, um, but it kept coming up with my work um, login. And so I gave up on that. But um, I, I just want to take, I, um, you know, Aaron had decided to make the presentation to the TSO tonight about the TAC, and um, I just wanted to add a few comments, um, and I understand you are going to take it up again, so I don't really want to take too much of TSO's time, but George had asked some questions about, like, what were the documents that the TAC created, um, and I, I mainly had some comments just about this complete streets policy, um, like the the complete streets policy is not just an internal TAC do document. It's a document that was helped, developed by TAC with staff support and then adopted by the select board, I believe in 2018. And um, I work for the State Department of Transportation and the Mass DOT and Mass DOT has a complete streets program where they ask people to communities to have like different levels of tier in terms of their commitment to complete streets. So by adopting the complete streets policy, Amherst achieved tier one, and then to get to tier two, which allows Amherst to be eligible for funding, it actually needs to create both a um, prioritization plan um, that's been submitted to Mass DOT for approval, and also a pedestrian and bicycle network plan um, so Aaron, in his remarks, he had suggested that 
some of the prioritization plan, which is going to be an internal TAC document, but it actually would also be something that would be adopted, I mean, or at least, you know, reviewed by the council and then also submitted to MassDOT for approval. And then the town would be eligible for that. So, I mean, most of our documents do sort of come back to the council, so they're not just for internal review. But thank you. Thank you. Thanks for your comment, Tracy. Um, okay, looks like no more comments. Um, we don't have any it items not anticipated 48 hours in advance. So um, I think that's it for tonight. Um, so I declare this meeting adjourned. Thank you. Thank you. Good night.